the, the, on the television, <clears throat> the two people on the right sound, I, I don't know if it's the right word, ladyish or feminine or what, what I'm sorry, forgive mm -hmm. me when I say that, I, sure. I, I don't know what the right word is. And the two of you on the left sound like you belong on a construction site with me. Oh well, thank and you. And you're concerned about changing whatever, but what about the voice? What about the approach? Now, I got to believe that in, in 2010, if we can go to the moon and we can go other places, we can change vocal cords and we can change a lot of things. To but a degree, yes. I never hear that. I never hear that. So yes, there, there is. Should there I are hang service. up and, and, and listen to your answer? Sure, sure, sure. Th okay, thank, thanks. Thank you for calling. The, the first thing I'll point out is we both have a cold, <laughs> and yeah. that severely affects your vocal cords. Um, but generally speaking, as you were yeah, saying, we, there, there, there is some surgery that you can get. It's fairly risky. Once, you, uh, once testosterone lengthens and thickens your vocal cords, it's very hard to make them thinner and smaller again. They can go in and cut your vocal cords and re-sew them, but you have a good chance of losing your voice entirely. Yeah. Um, the, the actual difference between the average male and average female voice is only half an octave. And women uh, typically speak with a different pattern of, of words. Um, they typically speak in a more sing-song effect. Men typically speak more monotone, so women fluctuate the tones more. They generally speak with more um, exhalation than men do. So there's a lot that you can do to practice um, to actually have a more convincing voice. And that's generally the, the more widely accepted track is to not undergo surgery, but just like if you were training to sing, to undergo you know, six months to 12 months of practice of changing your voice. It takes a lot of work practicing every night. And if you go on YouTube, if you have internet access, there are some excellent tutorials that will blow your mind on what you can do with the human voice to sound more feminine. Sure. A lot of that's a matter of personal preference, though. Mm -hmm. At what point in the transition are you comfortable and you just want to live your life? Mm. And I'm going to go for some water if you want to add anything. Yeah, <laughs> um, it, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting question. It, it is something, it is one of those surgeries that, um, <clears throat> that certainly is available all over the world. However, it is risky and um, it's, it's lo totally losing your voice would be a really bad thing. Mm -hmm. So um, the risk factor, it, it's something you have to weigh very carefully. <clears throat> and um, It's a personal decision for it, every it person. It is, it is. Um, so, yeah, that's one of those things. And um, I believe statistically, um, women's voices exist in a much broader range than men's do. Um, you, you can find, especially among singers, you can find some with really, you know, almost baritone voices. Mm -hmm. And they're beautiful sounding voices. So a lot of it really has to do with how you say your words and some of the focus on, on how you speak more than the actual tone. But certainly, a higher pitched, not falsetto tone is going to be a better uh, social cue to femininity. But it's not a guarantee. Not a guarantee. And certainly, anyway, it's, I'm not, I don't want to belabor the point. There <laughs> certainly have been a lot of uh, very sexy women with very deep voices. Mm -hmm. I was <clears> thinking <throat> the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, but, but anyway, um, I wanted to get back to our conversation, and, sure. and certainly. I wanted to, you know, obviously you have a son. Um, I do. Couldn't be terribly old. Um, <laughs> um, he is 18 and a half. Oh my God. He's wow. a freshman at uh, Eastern Connecticut State University. Wow. I'm impressed. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, a little older than I expected. <clears throat> um, looking at you, I expected uh, somebody much younger. No. Nope. But, um, but, but, okay. Um, so now your son, Sean, yeah. came, he came out to you when? He did. He came out to us uh, September 5th of 2008. Wow. And that was sort of the day uh, our lives changed, I yes. suspect, forever. And um, in talking to him about coming here, uh, I said, Sean, you took us from being very 
average middle America white bread to we're very colorful and um, you know we're not boring anymore this is this is a very yeah. interesting arena to be in <coughs> sure. um, we had had his, his entire junior year he goes to the North he went to the North Tree Academy uh, was a nightmare he pretty much yeah. called that whole year in his GPA took a dive uh -huh. um, he was a horrible creature to all of us in his family um, to the point where my husband and I had asked him on separate occasions, you know, are you drinking? Are you doing drugs? Um, and it was bad. And sure. I didn't realize how bad it was until it wasn't bad anymore. And that was September 5th when he finally told us. And we had um, been fighting that whole summer really bad, really, really bad. And um, the end of, of one particular nasty, just unpleasant exchange with my beloved son, um, I threw up my hands and said, you know, I've had enough, I'm, I'm going to bed. And about an hour later, I, I kind of woke from that semi-dream state with my baby boy laying right next to me um, with tears running across his nose. And, my God, first of all, you scared the heck out of me. What are you doing? <laughs> right. So it just, it startled me. And we, we sat up and he said, I, I have to tell you why I've been pushing you and dad and Brian away. And so I sat up and I'm sitting there kind of holding my breath and I'm thinking a thousand different things. <laughs> this, this was not one of them. This wasn't even on the top 100 of the things that I thought could be wrong. And, um, you know, his chin was quivering and his, these silent tears are rolling down his face and I'm thinking, well, this is big. Right. This isn't, you know, I've decided not to go to college. This is, this is something huge. And then he said, I'm gay. He didn't say, I'm thinking about it. I might be. I'm toying with the idea. He, he said it very confidently and assuredly. And I took a big deep breath and I said, oh, okay. Um, and that was about all I said for a minute. <laughs> and I put my hand on his, on his knee and I said, I love you and we need to go talk to dad. And he said he didn't want to and he got very upset. And I, I said, Sean, I'm not sure of anything else right now, but I am sure that if we don't include dad in this conversation, that's a hurt that we're not going to be able to forget, to, to fix. Sure. And it, I, just trust me. And so I held his hand and we went downstairs. My husband was on the couch, and um, I was in front of Sean, and I was able to mouth to Tim, this is big. And that was it. That's all I could say, because Sean was right behind me. Poor kid. And we sat down, and he had to get the courage up all over again mm -hmm. to say it. And my heart was breaking for him so, so, so much. And um, we sat up for several hours and talked, and we told him that this didn't change anything that you're our son and we love you and and that's you know unconditional um, it's very nice as a parent to realize that you've said something your whole life and that you really mean it <laughs> it turns out to be I so. think I think some of us <laughs> as parents we say things but then when we're faced with them yeah. we start backpedaling and we think well well everything but that yeah. and and that wasn't the case um, I never had any issues with um, the gay community. I thought all along they should have all the rights that we have. Um, and I'm, I'm blessed and I've shared with you guys how glad I am I didn't have any biases sure. to get over because that allowed us to be there immediately for Sean. Mm -hmm. um, Sean told us that night that he's known since sixth grade that he was gay. And um, probably before that, that something was different, but I don't think he could put a name to it. Sure, sure. Um, yeah. And, you know, he explained a lot about what he had gone through. And as a parent, that it broke my heart that he went through all of those things by himself. Yes. yes. It, from my perspective, needlessly, because we would have been there for him, but, you know, it's neither here nor there. We talked about hindsight sure. yeah. uh, on the way here. Um, you know, I think Sean came out to us at the time he needed to come out to us. Right, right. And we were ready for everything he had to share with us. Um, you talked about, you know, you guys come.